A heated debate today over health care on the Hill. The House Ways and Means Committee sparring over universal health care. Here was New York Congressman Tom Reed earlier. Listen. I'm not questioning the motives of the folks that are putting forth the proposal for Medicare for all. They want to have a better health care uh, opportunity uh, for Americans. As a Republican, I am offended that I get accused of not caring about Americans. I get offended that all I'm here in Washington, D.C. is to, uh, to, to feather uh, my pockets and that all I care about is the almighty dollar. I want a system that's better. I want a system that responds to the American voice that says these costs are killing us, literally. And Congressman Reed joins us now. So, Congressman, how would you make the health care system work better? Well, what I would do is not go down the, the path of government-controlled health care like we were discussing today in the hearing about Medicare for All. And I'd rather empower patients. I would empower doctors and reward good behavior when it comes to pre uh, prescription medicines that are prescribed appropriately. Make sure that the incentives are aligned to drive costs down as opposed to what we see today in health care in America, that reward costs ever increasingly going up. Congressman John Layfield here. Uh, during the Obama administration, the Congress, the Republican Congress kept saying they want to repeal and replace Obamacare, and they would do it on day one. But it's pretty much like the Republican establishment is, is the dog that caught the car. All of a sudden, President Trump gets elected, and I don't think anybody expected it. And there was no day one for you guys. There was no day two. There was no day 1,000. Where is this health care bill that you guys said you were going to put forward that was so much better than Obamacare? Because you guys have not delivered on what you promised for years. Well, first and foremost, I mean, we're, we're proposing uh, health care that's in the power of people and not in the power of government. So a legislative one-size-fits-all type of approach is not going to be what you see uh, in regards to a solution of health care uh, coming out of Washington, D.C. But what we're going to do is realign the incentives under Medicare, under Medicaid, so that good behavior by patients is rewarded. Good behavior by doctors is rewarded, and that good quality outcomes is what the outcome is, is the way you get reimbursed uh, for providing that care. Right now, it's all perverse right now, and that's the core of a Republican model that changes health care for the good for all Americans. Uh, Congressman Steve Forbes here. What about the idea of removing some of the restrictions or all of the restrictions on health savings accounts, such as you using that money for uh, non-prescriptive drugs? You don't have to have a health care plan to actually have your own HSA, things like that. And what about nationwide shopping for health insurance? The little baby steps in that direction, but go all the way. And uh, push in. how about uh, a real investigation of PBMs, pharmaceutical benefit managers, which are about half the price of the drugs that the consumers pay for? Are there specific ideas in those spheres that uh, you're going to put on the table? Absolutely. And those, uh, those ideas have been put forward, Stephen. And you're going down the right path. You know, the reforms that I think can get us into the right direction are about transparency, accountability, and then also rewarding good outcomes in America's health care system. Right now, we don't have that. And that is the cornerstone, I think, of a Republican model that could work, where people control their future health care, not government, and also people are part of the solution, not the uh, government uh, proposal that I heard about today. Congressman, I'm going to take John and Steve's question and join it into one, because it sounds like you're uh, pretty much giving me some talking points by saying power of the people and rewarding patients and rewarding doctors by not giving concrete suggestions as to how we can improve this system. Yes, we have the Democratic Party that some cannot agree on Medicare for all. Some are suggesting universal health care and possibly private insurance mixed into that the batch. But so far, what I've heard from you is just flowery words. Yeah, well, no, let's get to the uh, heart of it. And, you, know, you take our reimbursement policies under Medicare and Medicaid. And what you say is, look, at, we're going to reward doctors uh, for good quality outcomes. That is a complete reimbursement model change than what healthcare in uh, government run healthcare is today under Medicaid and Medicare. And we're going to align the incentives so that doctors and patients are rewarded. And then we're going to go to the PBMs and we're going to go to the others in the private healthcare uh, area and say, where's the money coming? Why are the costs being so driven so high? So that we can use the power of people to hold them accountable. Well, what about the power like of pharmaceutical today. companies and the lobbyists that have been investing so much money into all of you on capital? Well, it, it's not about investing in, in us. What it is is about pulling that uh, that curtain back so that there's transparency there. We're, we're, we're all about holding them in, uh, accountable, those pharmaceutical companies, the PBMs, because right now you don't have that in the healthcare world of, of America. And so if you do that, force them to disclose 
where are you negotiating? Why are you setting these prices? Where are the cost drivers coming from? Then the people will start demanding and they will be, see behavioral change by pharma, the providers that look at getting the cost going in the right direction that's down. Congressman, this is Scott Martin, staying on the doctor side of things. I mean, we've got a major medical drain in this country. I've got a lot of doctors as clients, and they're not happy about entering in the profession. They're not re recommending people going to the profession. What about Great tort question. reform on top of all this to help the doctor situation work out a little bit better for themselves? Well, I, that, that's also a proposal, but uh, to be honest, I mean, tort reform, I support it. It's part of the solution, uh, but that is not going to cure this issue of, of the woes of America's health care system. What we need to do is realign the incentives under the public plans that we already have with Medicare and Medicaid, and then also we got to bring transparency and accountability to the private health insurance market as well as the prior health, private health care market in America. That yeah. doesn't happen today. Too many lawyers inside and the Beltway. That's what's this? stopping no, tort reform. I mean, but, but I have a question time. about Medicare, if I may, because I know it's, it's an untouchable subject inside the Beltway because there are a lot of seniors that are voting for you guys. But it, Medicare misspends $60 billion every year. $60 billion in waste and fraud. That's... What's to, what's to think that if we went to Medicare for all, we wouldn't exponentially increase that number? You, you got it. And, and to think that somehow the government bureaucrats are going to be able to hold these costs to, in, into account, uh, that's just not how it works. You know, I was talking today. You know, government you know, generally operates from 9 to 5. How are you going to deal with a, a need at 2 o'clock in the morning? The government's not going to respond to that. This is why health care going down this path of bigger government is not the solution. What we need to do is get to these uh, systems that reward good outcomes, that reward and financially drive market pressures to get costs going down, not up. Uh, Congressman. Well, when are you going to do this? When are you going to do this? You, you, you promised day one you're going to do this, and you guys keep talking all this, these fancy so words. Why? You've done nothing. And you lost control Why would of we Congress? believe you now? So, so why, would the, why would we go down the Democratic plan and take out private health insurance and replace it with a complete government-run uh, plan? I, I think Because you said you were going to. Buried, you said repeal think, and replace. And you I guys think said repeal and replace. Well, John, you said that over John, and over we and over. remember what happened the last time. What, there was one vote. Uh, a senator who no longer is alive, one vote that, that stopped that from happening. We had something on the table, right? We did. And, so and what that's are they going to exactly do now? So what are you going to do now? <laughs> well, we're what not going to embrace... I, I can tell you right now, we're not going to embrace further government uh, experimentation and taking over <laughs> America's health care. That's not the right path. If you want to talk about reinsurance reform, you want to talk about payment reimbursement reform, we can get in the room and come to an agreement on this. All right. Well, it is a huge subject. We're going to ask you to come back and see us again to talk as things progress, Congressman. Thank you for being here. We appreciate Amen. it.